All right, so we want to once again thank all of our guest panelists that we will then go in and introduce. Um, we also want to give a big thanks to all of our participants who are on here today joining us for such an event. We are so excited to be, to be presenting this um, event and being your moderators. So we hope that you all learn some things, um, keep things in perspective, panelists have to say, as well as figure out a way where you can stand up and be counted for your own community. Um, so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and go into the gist of what this event is all about, which is Let's Talk Census. All right, so if you guys don't know already, um, that's the name of our event, Let's Talk Census. And we pretty much wanted to have a, converse, a conversational kind of way and we talk to some um, important officials about the things that you know we see happening in our communities, um, the things that we want to see happening in our communities, and how we can use census to be able to get us to the point where we want to get to. All about super excited to be doing it with everyone that is here today with us. Um, and Anija, she'll be speaking on exactly what State Up Be Counted is, how it was founded, and who are we? Okay, so hello, I'm Anija, and we are the founders, the yeah. co-founders of State Up Be Counted is our baby. Um, it was an idea that was brought in um, school with the teacher, and um, kind of sort of of my grandma. She was an influence in this event also. Uh, not in the event, but the um, organization. Mm -hmm. So Stand Up Be County is basically a team ran organization um, trying to better the Tri-City area. If you do not know what the Tri-City area is, that is Bell Glade, South Bay, and Pahokee. We're trying to get um, more funding into our community, um, increase the voting registration, the voting turnout, the census representation, the census respondents, and plenty more um, things to come. So yeah, that's really what stood up me kind of. And a lot of people with they end up be counted they think about it only being about the census mm -hmm. but we always like to let people know that stand up be counted means literally just being that leader for your community it means being that agent of change and we call all of our volunteers um, agents exactly what they do they go out they investigate they observe and they come back and they're able to tell us what they don't like or what they do like or what could be improved and we make sure that we stand up and we make sure we have a voice and we the way that we are counted is by making sure that we do exactly what we said we were going to do um to really make that change happen so stand up be counted it's literally a evolution of different things um, so with that said, we do have a little video that we want to show with, that we wanted to show you guys, which pertains to census. So we hope that you all enjoy that video and it's going to play now. We are Stand Up Be Counted, and we're here to enlighten you about some information on Census 2020. We find that many of our citizens are scared of filling out the census, but we are here to assure you that the census works on our behalf for the better of our communities. Here are a few important things you should know. One, it's never too late to fill out the census. You can fill out the census from email, online, or even by phone. Also, it doesn't take that long to fill out the census at all. And the census keep all of your information protected and covered. How may census improve our community, you may ask? With the funding, we're able to increase job opportunities, community involvement, free and reduced lunch, help support our teachers, and public transportation. Be the voice of change for your community. 
All right, guys, we hope that you enjoyed that video. Um, when we were asked to do that video, we were so excited because we knew that was going to be another way where we can really reach our communities and everyone um, in the Tri-City area. And it has, you know, been going around a lot of different platforms. So we're super excited for everyone to check out that video. Now, you guys, we are going to do some introductions because some very important people on this call with us that you guys need to remember and take note of because these are our everyday faces who works behind the scenes to make sure that you know everything runs smoothly in our communities um, but before we start we would like to shout out our philanthropy team um, who's on here today helping us run our event as well as mr michael who is one of our philanthropy team um, funders and he's working with us a lot making sure that we're able to just stay on task and you know do everything that we need to do when it comes to our business as well as our coach mr ben durgan he's actually um, been very supportive he's been working behind the scenes making sure that we have the panelists that we wanted to have um yep. he's a1 guy <laughs> very supportive <laughs> and with the efforts and help of them we have our guest panelists who are mm -hmm. here today which are some important people and it would not be right if we don't tell you we're going to be introducing them um today we have miss angela johnson angela johnson is a partnership specialist with the united states department of commerce census bureau She's a resident of Palm Beach County and lives in the city of Belle Blair. Angela is responsible for educating and partnering with five different counties, specifically in the African American communities, to make sure everyone is counted once, only once, but in the right place. She feels when everyone understands the importance of census, our communities will stand up to be counted. Angela's first decennial with the census was 2010 and she enjoys meeting and speaking to all that she's in contact with to make sure we have a complete and accurate count. So thank you so much Miss Angela Johnson for being here with us today. We really really appreciate you. Um, next, would you like to say anything Miss Angela? Okay, next um, Oh, we are allowing you guys just to do a brief one or two minutes um, explaining exactly why you feel census is important to you. So, Ms. Angela Johnson, you can now unmute yourself and just give your brief one to two minutes. Thank you for allowing me to be here to take part of this uh, very productive conversation. Um, census is very important because, as you already noted, um, it is our civic obligation and also it helps provide all types of resources for where we live. And whatever our numbers are, it will affect us for the next 10 years. And we only have one more month to increase those numbers. Thank you. All right, Ms. Angela Johnson. Now we're going to be going on to Ms. Mary Evans, who is here today with us. Nigel. Ms. Mary O. Evans is a native of Florida. She attended elementary, middle, and high school in Belle Glade, Florida. After graduating from high school, Ms. Evans attended Tennessee State University, where she earned a bachelor's of art, Bachelor of Arts degree in Spanish and French. Ms. Evans has been educated for over 40 years in Palm Beach County, where she began her career as a Spanish and French teacher. Currently, Ms. Evans is the Public and Community, community Relations Coordinator for the State. She is also a consultant with the School Board of Palm Beach County, mentoring principals and a point person for the 2020 Census. Thank you so much, Ms. Mary Evans, for being here today with us. As well, you have your one to two minutes to explain to us to, from your own point of view why census is important. Oh, uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, great. Um, 
as you stated, I am the public relations coordinator for the city of Belle Glade, and one of my duties is to uh, direct the complete count committee in order to come up with strategies to increase our percentage for the census. Uh, I had this position in 2010 when we only had 22% then of our population to complete the questionnaire. We went from 22% to 56% in 2010. So consequently, we are trying to improve our percentages. Now, prior to the pandemic, we had a lot of uh, activities planned in order to increase our percentage. But since then, we still have been working and uh, we are continuing to work. So we are meeting today at three o'clock with the complete count committee so we can discuss additional strategies for the last month that we have in order to bring our percentage up higher. We are today at 43.4%. So we have a lot of work to do in one month and we want you all to join us. I have invited some of you all to come to our meeting today at three o'clock so you can join in with us. We need boots on the ground in order to raise our percentage in one month. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we're so excited to hear that you guys are actually a lot and we're excited to see what's up with that. Um, next we have Mr. Joe Cowles. We're gonna be having Anija introduce him as well. The Honorable Joe Kyles, Mayor of the City of South Bay, Florida. Joe Kyles has lived in South Bay since 1970. He was educated in the local schools where he graduated from Georgia Senior High School in Belgrade. He articulated into vocational training at North Technical School in Rivera Beach. He began his career with the Okalanta Sugar Camp Sugar Co Florida Crystals in where he worked for 20 years. He retired as a division supervisor. He began a second career that spent 20 years as a labor negotiator with the International Association of Mechanics and Aerospace Workers, Lodge 166 in Cape Canaveral. He studied labor management in Hollywood, Maryland at William Winspensering Center. Mayor Kyle's has earned several community and humanitarian awards, yet he's most likely is mostly excited about his godly service as the chair deacon of Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Belle Glade, where he remains ready to serve. He's a devoted Christian, dedicated husband and father. Mayor Kyle, Mayor Kyle thrives upon improving the quality, quality of life for the residents of South Bay. So, Kyle's youth. So Mr. Okay. Joe Cowles is not here when he is when he arrives on the, to the event, we will be glad to have him. All right. We're going to introduce the Honorable Steve Wilson, Mayor of South, I mean Mayor of um, the City of Belle Glade. Mayor Wilson was born in Belle Glade, Florida. When Mayor Wilson was five years old, his family relocated to the city of Boston. In 1977, he moved back. He moved back to Belle Glade, where he graduated from Glade Central Community High School. In 1980, degree in the School of Technology from Florida State University. Mayor Wilson was employed with the, with the Department of Corrections for over 28 years, retiring in 2012. Mayor Wilson is not only, dedicated, not only a dedicated husband and father, he is also a devoted Christian. He is a member of St. John First Baptist Church in Belle Glade, where he served as a deacon. Mayor Wilson, Wilson with numerous statewide organizations, groups, committees, and boards. He's a past president of Palm Beach County League of Cities and a member of Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. He has earned several business, business and community awards to include the Florida League of Cities Dedicated Service and Outstanding Leadership Award, and he was selected as one of Palm Beach County's top professionals in business and industry for 2013. He devotes his life to improving the quality of life for the residents of Belle Glade. We do have um, Mayor Wilson with us on. So Ma Mayor Wilson, thank you so much for being here with us. We would like to also ask you um, from your own very personal opinion, why is census important? 
But thank you for the question. And let me just first start by saying thank you for the young leadership. Uh, you guys are taking the lead. Uh, it means a lot to us uh, that, that we have young people want to take on such a, a big issue, uh, a big concern, and something that's important to the city of Belgrade, South Bay, and Pahokee. The importance of it is that you know that every year that the folks in our community, they look forward to having better roads, sidewalks, and having the beautification of like any other community. But we must also remind them that they must be counted. Um, funding don't come without people having the numbers. And so the team leadership here, I'd like to really thank Ms. Angela and uh, our team leader in Belgrade, Mary O. Evans, for their leadership. But again, more importantly, to the young leadership, uh, getting out and getting involved. Some people we can't connect with that you can. And so I'm looking forward to this, up, this conversation and well as the uh, opportunity to get out in the community and let people's voices as well as their numbers be counted. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for just acknowledging all the work that we're trying to do for our communities. And we appreciate every, each and every one of you all who are doing the work as well behind the scenes. With that being said, you guys, those were all our panelists. We hope that you all will remember their faces and everything that they have accomplished within their lifespan and what they're doing even now. Um, and with that being said, we are going to go ahead and move on to these questions that we have received from social media as well as our own. And we just want to let you guys know all of our participants who are here today on the Zoom, you too have an opportunity to let your voice be heard. So if you have any question for any questions for our guest um, panelists, all you have to do is just drop them in the chat and we'll make sure to get to those questions. So as many as you have, just leave them down there because we're gonna make sure that everything that you have a concern for or want to see change or needs to be improved, it is reached and it is heard. Um, with that being said, we do have some questions that we would like to share. Um, this first question is for Ms. Angela Johnson. And the question states, at this current rate, what are you and your team doing to increase the census completion percentage? <laughs> Thanks so much for that question. So what we are doing as a partnership specialist, um, as Ms. Evans said earlier, we depend on partners. We depend on you young people, as uh, the mayor, Steve said earlier, sometimes we may not be able, we may be able to reach certain people and we may not be able to reach the people you guys are able to reach. So we depend on partnerships, like um, the partnerships that we have all over the Glades area. So as Ms. Evans said earlier, we, um, we give all our partners vital information to let you know what, where we are at this time and whatever events is happening. We rely on Ms. Evans' partnership. She works with a, a large amount of people. We work with um, a lot of different partners in our area to help get the word out, such as you know, there's a lot of things going on as far as COVID-19, where we are restricted uh, of doing a lot of different things. So one thing that we can do, we have a lot of food distribution sites happening. So we have census workers at the food distribution sites. If we're not there, Ms. Evans team, who is the chairperson, of the Complete Count Committee. She has a team of people out there. We have Tammy Moore that, um, that has a partnership with Census. So we look for Census partners while they are out at events, help spread the Census message by just reminding people to please complete your uh, form and you can do it right now. Those are some of the things we are doing in our area. Wow, that's really amazing. We would like to really consider 
you know, the amount of work that you guys are doing, especially the teamwork. You know, we have, you know, quite a few citizens and it's important that we have a strong backbone and a strong team who are really going out and helping. Um, we also, speaking of Ms. Um, Mario Evans, we have a question for her. Um, and the question say, states, what do you find is the hardest part about getting our citizens to complete the census? Uh, what do I think is the hardest part? Well, I don't think nothing is really hard, but we must engage them to ensure that they have opportunity to fill it out. Just, mm -hmm. I just want to give an example. About a couple of days ago, and I know you all might know where the Alabama and Georgia show here is on Martin Luther King Boulevard. We saw about 15 guys sitting under the tree. So my partner and I, we went there to see if they had completed their questionnaire. No, they had not. So we had our phones, we had our laptop, and we did it right there with them. They were willing to do it, but we must take this initiative, we find out for the last month, to the people. Now, we've done uh, many things uh, in order, you know, to educate them as to what the census is all about. We've been to the churches, we've been to events held in the community prior to the pandemic, and now every Friday, what we do, we have a food distribution, we have our workers there, they are distributing materials, they have their phones, laptops there to sign people up. We also, uh, we're at the schools when they do their food distribution on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are there, we are there as well. So we don't think it's really hard, but we just got to have the people that will now go to the people and uh, just tell them how important it is, and they will fill out the questionnaire, you know, they will let us still do it on the telephone. So we just need the workers and we need you all to join in with us and go to the people because the word is out there. It's on TV, it's everywhere. They know where it is. We need workers to actually go and do this. Wow. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, sometimes it really does take for us to go out into the community to make sure that they have the opportunity because everyone isn't always as fortunate or have the have the Wi-Fi or even mobile, you know, phones to even have that ability mm -hmm. to fill it out. So the fact that we're able to do outreach and get and make sure that the census is completed, that's really amazing. So we're really happy that you all are taking that initiative because not everyone is just gonna walk up to people sitting under a tree mm -hmm. and make sure that they have their census like filled out. So we really thank you all for that dedication. Yes, thank you all. Um, so the next question is for Ms. Angela. As you may know, many cities are fighting for their communities to complete the census. Why is it so important for the glazed area to complete the census? Excellent question. I know a lot of times um, we have a, a lot of issues where people may even ask the mayor, why can't we do this? Why don't we have that in our area? What about the jobs? Why we can't get certain um, uh, businesses to come to our area and open up businesses? So for the cities, um, they know how important it is for us to increase the numbers because when we increase the numbers, you're able to look at data, census data, accurate data, where businesses look at the data and they decide, should I come to Bell Glade, South Bay, Pahokee, and open up a business? And it depends on how many people live there. Normally, businesses don't come to locations where they feel that no one lives there. They look at census data to determine uh, whether or not they need to invest in bringing their business in the area. People even ask, why don't we have a Walmart? Numbers, numbers always dictate the need. If the numbers are, are not there, it can't support that need. And we do need representation to represent we the people. So if we're fighting for a school in our area, if we're fighting for a certain a hospital, 
then we need the representatives to make sure that happens. And that comes from the numbers. We need the numbers to reflect how many people live there. And when everybody is counted, a wealth of stuff begins to open up for everybody. Excellent mm -hmm. question. That was an excellent response. I do feel like a lot of our citizens may not even know, you know, the dedication or the way census even Works. affects mm -hmm. our community. And we do, that's honestly true. We do hear a lot of people say, you know, we need more of this, we need more of that. Why don't we have this? And for you to be able to articulate exactly the process of getting more people to um, complete it and what happens, it allows us the chance to actually take hold of that information and do what we have to do in order to get these resources and get these things that we would like to see in our community. Anaja, do you have anything to comment back on that? Um, I would like to say, um, Ms. Angela, we, we recognize what you're doing. Um, it's very important in all the fact that not many people are educated on the census. So, we really appreciate you and what you're doing. Um, the, <laughs> the next question is for Mayor Wilson. Being that you are a city official, if we were to get the census complete, completion percentage to increase, what different things would you want to bring into the community? Uh, again, what an excellent question. Let me just start by saying this. Uh, we have a saying in the political arena if you're not at the table for discussing your dominion. And that's why it's important and I will use it for this perspective in terms of this conversation. If people don't be counted, they're not gonna be considered. We have to provide the services day to day. And in order to provide the services, it requires resources. Now to answer your question, if we did have the increase and got the resources, there are a lot of things we want to see done in Belgrade. Our Priority right now is infrastructure, you know, roads and more roads, sidewalks and beautification. If you notice, if you come into the city limits of Belgrade, we're concentrating on the infrastructure. That is better pipe system underneath for quality water and better roads. That's important. Uh, you can come and build, but if you don't have good infrastructure, then it's going to fall apart. And the second phase of this project is beautification. Just like when you go to Palm Beach Gardens or Jupiter, uh, we're gonna bring in beautification projects in this in this city. But we gotta get the hardcore first, that the infrastructure. You know how your grandmother or your parents used to say, I want you to clean the house up as opposed to straighten the house up. When you clean it up, you're doing the major things in, in the house. And that's what we're doing in the city of Belgrade. But uh, housing is something that we're working on uh, to include in this conversation to make sure that after we get the infrastructure done, the beautification as a part of it, we're concentrating on housing. That's a big piece. Well, in fact, in the next 30 days, we should be doing an RFP to get a, a new housing complex, a townhome complex for workforce um, development, to have people from all over, our teachers, our firefighters, the law enforcement, to be inclusive in this conversation. So we're hoping, we're depending on the folks to get the census filled out because this will not happen if we don't have the resources. And thank you again for the question. Thank you. Oh, it's a follow-up question for you too, um, Mr. Wilson. Um, the question is from a teenager that goes to this um, school, Blaze Central. She, she asks, what are the changes you are putting in place to everyone, including teens, to be safe? Uh, I'm glad you asked it. Well, you know, with the pandemic situation, we're still trying to follow the CD CDC guidelines, and sometimes that may be confusing, but we're trying to follow the guidelines. Uh, we're not in phase two yet. Hopefully within the next couple of days, we'll probably be in phase two. And so our parks and recreation will have an increase on it. Uh, right now, you know, the kids are limited on what they could do, but we we'll certainly believe that in phase two, they'll be able to go back out and have those structural uh, recreation activities. Uh, we have a couple of programs that we have in place uh, that we want to make sure we institute, but uh, at the same time, we, we, we on standby until we go into phase two. We want to keep the kids, the youth, as well as the adults safe and in a good environment, uh, not only dealing with violence, but also dealing with the pandemic, uh, COVID-19. 
So uh, help us on the way, just a matter of time, what phase we were going in, whether it's phase two, moving on to phase three. But right now we're on standby. Right. Understandable because COVID is very real and we want everyone safe as possible exactly. while going through this process. We're all in this together. All right. Now, um, we just want to point out that we have the Honorable Mayor Cows with today. So much, Mayor Cows, for coming on. Um, since you're on now, we can ask you your question, which is, why is census important to you? Oh, good afternoon. I'm sorry. I do apologize for joining late. And I, your question is very important to me. The census is very important to me because due to the fact that every 10 years, when they talk about census, they're talking about uh, money within your city. And what this what this census can do for our residents in the city of, city of South Bay, where that you can bring in infrastructure within your city, along with different other activities that you're trying to bring into your city about trying to achieve this particular money in your city there. And that's why it's so important that we go out and talk to each and every family members about how important it is. It's not about the city leaders. It's about everyone that plays a part in reference to trying to make sure they do the census each every 10 years within the Tri-City area as a whole. You can only, I, the reason I said the Tri-City area because that's what we're focusing on the Tri-City area about the census. So I think it's very, very important and you're talking about road, you're talking about infrastructure within your city, and you're talking about businesses within your city, and also you're talking about other things that residents want and look forward to having into your city. So as we go out and just say to each and every one of us, let's do it together. we are trying to bring some more money to our city in order for us to do it. Our budget is at a, at a minimum, where we had $2.1 million with reference to our budget. In order to try to achieve some of the things that we're trying to achieve, achieve in our cities, we definitely need the money dealing with the censors. So that's why I feel that it's very, very important that we come together to make sure that we get all our sensors counted each and every, every 10 years within the Tri-City area. All right, thank you so much. I actually have a question for both of our mayors. Um, we know that holding that title is a lot of stuff that you guys do behind the scenes. And if we're talking specifically about census, you know, a lot of our citizens they want a lot of stuff. We want a lot of stuff. We want to see a lot of stuff happen. Um, but sometimes we don't really understand exactly what it takes for things to actually come into play and be recognized. So we wanted you all to just kind of give a little brief description of like what your job looks like as it deals with the census, just so that our participants and citizens on the call can kind of understand the process that it takes so that they'll be able to educate themselves as well or why things probably take longer than others. Thank you. Thank you, young ladies. I speak at the full, uh, Mayor Wilson. One of the things, we are policy makers. That's what we do within the city of South Bay. As you know that we have five commissioners within each one of our cities there that sits on our diocese. And a lot of times people don't understand. And education is the most vital part when you start talking to your residents about why it takes time. As we go to Tallahassee, Washington, D.C., to lobby, along with our representatives, our senators, to try to make sure that whatever we need, I'm not going to say we need or whatever we want in our community there, we have to lobby for that particular money because we set a budget for X amount of things within our city to operate from year to year. But by the same token, when people say that why your roads is not being, uh, while our roads is taking a long time to, 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 to be improved, we have to take a look at it. The money doesn't come overnight. That money takes time. It takes two to three years. If you happen to get that particular money for that infrastructure within your city there, you have to go through process of making sure that that money is available to get the road done, to trying to get other projects taken care of in the city, in each one of our cities in the glazed area here. So that's why we have to continue to educate them about why. Because we just recently did some work within the city of South Bay in the Southwest area in reference to infrastructure. I don't know where you young ladies are aware of that particular area over there by the Comcast area. We know that the roads and everything are really bad over in that area. But we were able to get the money from the state to make sure that we take care of the infrastructure and the stormwater drainage in that particular area. So that's the reason that we have a town hall meeting to try to let our residents know precisely what is going on. And after speaking with them, now they understood exactly why it take, takes long to try to bring money to the city and making sure that you do the census as well. So that's why I said the census is very important to try to get more and more money to do the thing within your city, in your city, 
So therefore, the, the residents won't have to wonder of what's going on and why this and why that. But if we continue to lobby for more and more money with the representatives and the senators that we have in Tallahassee, and hopefully our Congress in Washington, D.C., will continue to work with us from a local level to make sure that we get more and more money to do different things within our cities. And to add to that, Don, and thank you again for the excellent question. I always like to share with new up and coming politicians or people who want to be public servants is that what is this thing we call politics? Politics is the process that determines who get how much. Not who get how much for themselves, but who get how much for which the people they represent. Who get how much education, who get how much finance, who get how much health care, and who get how much justice. That's what politics is all about. And again, if you're not at the table to have those discussions, nine times out of 10, you're going to be on the menu. We depend on a lot of people to help make decisions. Give you a quick example based on what the mayor just indicated. Um, this past last year, we had in the budget um, from the governor's budget um, a state of the art community center. Going back to your question when you said about for the kids, state of the art indoor pool, indoor gym, indoor weight room, a, 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 a studio for the kids who want to do music, state of the art. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better um, uh, facility. Went through all the process and, and could see my friend Ben Dern in there who was up in halls of Tallahassee. Went through all the procedures. And the midnight hour, our governor, and rightfully so, he had the right to veto, vetoed the project. State of Art Community Center for Bellevue, but it was vetoed. Those things, as Mayor Council indicated, we have no control. We have to depend on other folks. But here's the case when they're talking about the census that we don't have to depend on nobody else but ourselves to go ahead and do what we need to do. Be engaged, be counted. So you don't have to rely and wait in the midnight hour for somebody to say yes or no on the project that you need for your community. Yes, it's a process. And I tell all young politicians, you make promises to people all the time about what you can do. But at the end of the day, you still have to have those Establish relationship with other folks to say yes to those projects. That's what caused the problems with us when we can't deliver, when we make promises. We depend on everybody else. But here's the case with census. We don't have to depend on nobody else. We depend on our community to step up, and that's why we engage. Again, thank you for the question. Thank you so much for answering. We actually have a question for Ms. Mary Evans. Um, the question is, teens assist in getting their parents to complete the census? Would you repeat the question again, please? Yes, ma'am. It says, how can teens assist in getting their parents to complete the census? Okay, how can teens uh, assist in having their parents complete the census? Well, we've been doing education with uh, the young people as well. Because on my complete count committee, we do have some young people on there. And we ask them to, uh, they've been going to the Boys and Girls Club, to the Teen Center. They've been educating the young people there about census and hope that they will take the information home and share it with their parents and uh, help their parents, you know, to fill out the questionnaire. Well, that's one way, you know, we have been doing that. We make sure that I do. If any project that I have or what I do for the city, I make sure that we engage young people on our panel because we know that we need their assistance in order to help us uh, improve whatever we are doing. So that's one thing we have been doing, ensuring that uh, the young adults know about census and educating them as well. That's important. Um, I totally agree with the with educating our teens because sooner or later, you know, we will be filling in you all positions and doing the same work that you're doing. So it's important that we go ahead and we learn exactly everything we need to learn when it comes to like helping our community strive and getting our um, citizens to complete the census. So we want to really um, thank you all because we know education and for you all to be trying to reach our teams, that means a lot because, listen, we know. We really know. So we're thankful for that. Um, Anaya, would you like to ask the next question? Yes. Um, the next 
is for Ms. Angela. The question states, how much funding could we anticipate to receive from a successful census process? So this time around for census, we have the opportunity to receive over 675 billion with the B, billion dollars, 675 billion dollars, and that number is contingent. How many people live there? The question is never asked, how bad do Bell Glade, South Bay, Pahokee need it? How bad y'all need money for roads? That's not the question. How many people live there? How many people responded by determines how much money will our community receive for the next 10 years? The last census, which was 2010, and it's only done every 10 years. So when we respond, we got the, everybody need to play a part. So the last census, only 57% of Bell Glade responded back to census, only. So we got some money, 57%, not 100%. So we had to work off that little money for the next 10 years. South Bay, only 60% of the people responded. Pahokee, only 60% of the people responded. Right now, right now, Ms. Evans talked about Bell Glade. Right now, only for Bell Glade, only 43.4% have responded. We have until September the 30th to respond. For the city of Pahokee, only 45% have responded at the city of Pahokee. City of South Bay, 49.5 of the people have responded. So we got just one more month to really make a difference and something uh, myself and Ms. Evans had a meeting uh, a few weeks ago where her goal, and I'm sure I'm going to speak for all of the cities, we really do need 100% of the people to respond. But as Ms. Evans said, we don't want to go no lower than 80% of people responding back to the census so we can get the funding that we so desperately need, as Mayor Steve have said, and uh, Mayor Joe have said, we need the funding. We don't have to go ask for it. It's just ours because they gave it to us because for the roads, we'll only get a certain amount for roads. For SNAP, we're gonna only get a certain amount. Friend reduced lunches, we're gonna only get a certain amount. And those amount is contingent upon how many people responded back to census. We are in hurricane season. This is hurricane season. So if our area has been deemed a state of an emergency, a state of an emergency, and we need funding for the people that live here, it won't just be 57% coming to the city trying to get some help or trying to get ice or trying to get water. It's gonna be 100% of us coming if we have no lights. All of our homes are damaged. It affects all of us. So when we get the right funding, it helps all of us, not just the leaders, it just includes the leaders too. So it is contingent upon all of us to make sure everybody in our lives understand they really do need to respond now because whatever numbers we have, September the 30th, we're gonna have to live with that for the next 10 years. Excellent question as always. Wow, thank you so much for that information. I really hope that um, me and Anija are taking in all of these responses and all of this knowledge that you guys are giving out um, for future events and just for our own 
personal selves when it's time to complete this census. And we hope that everyone on our call, as well as the participants and citizens are learning as well about this information that you, so that you guys may be able to um, forward this message to someone that's maybe uneducated. Um, so we do have a special request from Miss Kelly. She asks that she would like to say something on behalf of the commissioner, um, Ms. Mr. Miss McKelly. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, Commissioner McKinley had intended on being on this call, but she had a family emergency, so she's unable to join you all via Zoom. However, I just want to pass on her. Um, she's just enormously proud of this project, and she'll be reaching out to you. Um, it took I'm just amazed of everything that you've done and going through the process and um, and you couldn't have picked a better project because it affects every single person in the glades, as Angela just said. And when you break it down to the granular, it's literally $1,600 per person that does the census. And just think that this money is for the, determines our fate for the next 10 years. So um, I, I, I appreciate everything that you all are doing. Um, overall, the county is behind this year compared to 10 years ago. Um, it's more difficult and the fact that everything that you're doing to help boost uh, knowledge and communication and participation is enormous. And I just wanted to give you a round of applause. So thank, thank you, you. so much. Um, I would actually like to ask a question on behalf of what you just spoke about, about how difficult um, it could be. Quick question. Um, let me get my thoughts together. So I was going to ask, um, we know that there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to uh, co completing the census. A lot of our citizens may be scared for whatever reason due to the questions that they ask. So depending on, you know, your your job and what you all do, um, what, what do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions that citizens have that would kind of prevent them from filling out the census? And how could we maybe um, unlearn that lie and allow them the opportunity to know that it's okay to fill it out, that their information is secure and it's for a good cause? Um, one, of, one, of, one of the thank you, Daryl. I, I love that question. One of the things that we know what's all what's going on at this present time, the pandemic, the pandemic is going on in reference to people don't allow you to come to their house, kind of afraid that you'll come into their house. But by the same token, we know about the immigration, everything has been going on with the immigration. And we have to reach out to the, the English speaking English speaker of people, the Latin, and also the Haitian are speaking individual as well. And to educate them in reference to not be afraid in reference to about your social security number your nationality and all this different type of thing. We need to talk to them to give them ease about it's great to join together and fill out this particular census report here. Because people are, as you as young people as yourself, some of the young people are afraid to talk to their parents about the censors, but, but you all, you're a great access to the, the young people. I know you asked Ms. Evan a question earlier in reference to the younger people. At this, at this time here on 31st, which will be next week, you'll be going back to distant learning. You haven't had a, a, a great deal of time to spend with your parents. This is the time now, since we got one more month to complete the census, this is the time to not now for you all to get out and talk to all the younger people, let them know that, hey, we're gonna be home with our parents, Daryl. Let's continue to educate them. Let's help them to fill out those particular census. And I think it will make a great and a big difference if you all get on board and try to talk to your other peers about educating their parents about this censor. And I think it will make a huge, huge difference in, 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 in the glazed area by having everyone, not the 100% of them, but we can 80% as Ms. Angela and Ms. Evan have already said, 80% of those family members that fill out those censors, I think it will make a huge, huge impact in the glazed area here, dealing directly with you younger people. And I want to thank you and I applaud you for everything that you're doing. And hopefully we'll talk to your other younger people to do the same identical thing. Okay, uh, one thing I'd like, exactly. to say, I'd like to answer that question as well, if you don't mind. Um, what we have done, and it's really working, because a lot of people had a misconception that this is a catch-22, the information that they are providing to the census. They will use it for other purposes. 
But you know, once we explain to them that that is not what this information is for, and it can't be used for anything else other than, you know, what the census needs it for. We've gotten young people, let's say Haitian, Creole, Hispanic, and the pastors of those uh, ethnicities to talk to their congregations, you know, to let them know they don't have to be fearful about filling out the census because it's not going to be used for anything else. I think Angela said 72 years. Uh, that's when they might take a look at some of this information, which is a long time. Now, social media, you young people can help us by bombarding that with your friends, you know, with your followers, all of that, because you'll be surprised of the young people who don't really have all the answers to, you know, the census, and they need to know. So, as I said, they can help their parents with that. So, for this next month, if we could, uh, if you could come, and I've invited you to today at three o'clock to come and hear the strategies that we are going to implement the next month to help us out to come to that 80% that we we're going to do in the city of Belgrade. So let's keep in mind that, uh, you know, to answer your question, and I think I did, that was what people were most fearful of, this information would be used for other means than what we are saying it is going to be used for. And, and to add to that, uh, there are some people who think that things are political. Uh, the world is full of politics. Mm -hmm. There's politics in the White House, there's politics in the church house, there's politics in the schoolhouse. And in some cases, politics in your house. That's just the way it is. But since the 2020 has nothing to do with politics, it's accountability. And that's what we've been sharing with these young folks. It has nothing to do with politics. It's all about accountability. And we must be accounted. We must be accounted for. Okay. Thank you all. We also wanted to give Ms. Kelly the opportunity to answer just in case she had any remarks um, for that question as well. Um, I think it was very well said by the other uh, speakers. I think there's some distrust of government and you, you, it's, we're, you mix COVID into it, there's kind of like a distrust of talking to anybody. So it makes it even harder. And that this is the first, you know, 10 years ago, you didn't have an option of doing it online. So everyone's more familiar with doing the, the, the formal paper version. And then you have the distrust of the post office right now. Um, I just think that we just, you know, it's just a bad year for the census, a lot of outside uh, forces, and that we just have to um, communicate all the different ways of filling out your census to be counted and that it's only used for that one purpose and nothing else. That's my thoughts. My thoughts. Thank you for your amazing answers. This next question is for Ms. Angela. As you know, in the um, Tri-City areas, we're utilizing social media and the food distributions to get the census completed for those who haven't completed it. What other resources could we use to mobilize and make sure that those numbers are increasing day by day? So that is one way to get the word out. Uh, social media, um, in every aspect, uh, social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook, I see people on TikTok, all the little social media outlets that you can find. But also, <coughs> excuse me, we're still having church. So who we call trusted voices I think as Ms. Evans said earlier, we have trusted voices in our communities and they may be having church online. They may be having church just in the church parking lot, sitting in their cars. Uh, there are back to school uh, events happening. People are still going to the schoolhouses, driving up, picking up computers, need the computers fixed. Um, giving out hot lunches, giving out food distributions. Anytime there is an event happening, those are excellent opportunities. We're even doing, people are doing COVID testing. People are doing voting, signing people up to participate with voting. 
anytime there's an event, that is an excellent opportunity to make sure we have all three telephone numbers for English, if you need to call English, telephone number for Spanish, if people need to call in for, and speak to someone that speaks their language, Spanish, uh, for Haitian Creole, people need to know. It's as easy as that. So if you can't go to this site and go online, you can always use the telephone and just call. Somebody will answer the phone, call the phone, and, uh, and they will be able to ask you the question. You give them the answer. But I also want to also go back and give you some facts. Something called Title 13. Title 13 says, any census worker that come to your house, and we are in what we call non-follow-up response. Non-follow-up response. So if people did not receive uh, or respond back to census, you have enumerators coming, or census workers, sometimes we call them, coming, knocking on your door. Title 13 say, when we get your information, it is against the law for us to share your information with any other agency, any White House, any ICE, any federal government, it is against the law. That's Title 13. Title 44 dictates when you share your information with us, your information is sealed for the next 72 years. So when people are afraid, always share with them the facts. We cannot share your information. It's against the law. We cannot, but we do need the information to make sure where you live, you're counted. That's very important. Thank you so much. May I, may I just sort of piggyback with what Andrew yes. said with the Man. question asked about ways in which we can get into the lab. Now, tomorrow, uh, we are having a huge hot food distribution. And this is sponsored by two young people. We are just helping them out. Where we're going to have a census tent there, voters registration, and West Pay. Now, well, at the census tent, we're going to have the equipment necessary to, uh, to fill out the questionnaire online for people that have not completed it. And that's going to be from starting at 12 o'clock. So we've been tag teaming with any organization that we've heard that's having something in order to have census represented there so that the people will have an opportunity to complete this. But it's going to be very strategic for this last month that we go out and, you know, we know where the hot spots are. We need to go there physically and see what we can do to get the people to sign up by social distancing and all this kind of stuff. But we're going to have to have people to do this, to help us out with this. Thank you. Can I follow up after Ms. E Ms. Evans? Um, because we were invited to come, we will have two census representatives there at that um, event, uh, assisting people should they need our help to, um, to respond back to census right then, right there. They're going to have their iPads ready, willing to assist. That's amazing, getting everyone together in the community thing to make sure that this is a well for. I'm so. We have a few more questions left. Um, Miss Evans, we would like that if you could share the info with us, email it to us so we can um, display it and get participants to come out. We will ask if you could do that for us. Um, for Miss, for the mayors on the call, um, many people would like to know what what is the goal that you will all funding to the by September 30th. What is the goal that you have in mind? Can you, can you repeat the question? You kind of broke up here. What is the goal that you all have in mind by September 30th 
to, um, to increase this percentage? What number do you have in mind? So we could, like the community activists and guests, could get to that goal and help you reach it. I'm glad you asked that question. And my chairperson, she got the number. Mary? Okay, yeah, we, we, you know, we set our goal at 80%, but we'll take more. But that's what we said, 80%. And we're going to really work diligently to get that. Within the city of South Bay, what we're doing, we're trying to reach that 100% goal. We don't know whether it's going to be possible or not, but that we have set our, our mind uh, in reference to trying to reach that, uh, Vice Mayor Bernard, who was uh, oversee the censors in the city of South Bay, her and the count committee have been out in different events. And this is a goal that we are trying to reach. If we can't reach that goal, we, I'm with the city of Belgrade, at least trying to get 80%. So this is our goal for the upcoming uh, month, which is still left for the censors. I think those are amazing um, responses to Anija's question. Um, I do want to just personally add that um, dealing with something as far as the census and everything that we have going on um, as far as COVID and how it, it has pretty much limited us, um, we do need to make sure that we take in consideration any way possible that we can reach out to our citizens. Um, I do want to add in uh, the goals that you guys have are amazing to um, reach that 80%, but I do want to make it very vital that we don't just you know, kind of stick with that number. I feel like the goal should honestly be to just get as many as possible. Um, because at the end of the day, those numbers, those completions, that's gonna help us, you know, with receiving every resource and doing everything we can for our, for our citizens. And me and Anijah are most definitely dedicated to helping um, our communities, our Tri-City area reach more than just 80. It's all about that dedication. And we just wanna let you guys know that we're totally um, ready and we're ready to go out and make sure that we're able to reach more than 80% and just really touch the lives and get our teens involved as well. Okay, so we're on to the next question. We're beginning to wrap up. Um, for Mr. Wilson, um, for those who have this um, idea of, oh, I don't want to do it because this process takes too long, just give them a, a, a little brief idea of how long it takes to complete the census. And, and thank you for asking that. What we've um, been experiencing and, and, and I've learned uh, through the support of Ms. Evans is that it's just like if you're running for office, people want value for their presence. And let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you're running for office, running for a elected position, um, you go out and you ask people to support you. You may put the flyers out, you may put the literature out, you may be on the radio, but people want you to come to them. They want value yes, they for their presence. Yes, and I learned doing, dealing with the census as I'm engaged with Ms. Evans and her team is that people want value for their, their, for their accountability. Um, they know it's important, believe it or not, they do know. They know how important it is for the community. Don't be misled that they're not informed, but they still want you to come to them to understand that they have value of being, their existence. And so just like she was saying, she used the example under the tree, there was like 15 folks out there, and they were just volunteering. Hey, we're glad y'all came out here to see us. Going in the pockets, getting their identification. And so I'm beginning to say, wow, you know, it's interesting that you could put all the information out there, but still people want you to come to them because they want to make sure that they have value of what you're trying to do and what you believe in. And they know how important it is but they still want to have value about their being, their presence. Yes, understandable. So we're down to our final question. And question for um, next after since what we do next? We take this strive to increase the numbers in the next 10 years. What is next? Could you repeat that, please? What is next for us after the census, the next 10 years? 
what 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 are we going to do next? Well, I, I like to start with this, saying, well, if we reach our goal eighty percent or even higher, that people begin to be empowered and engage into this process, so we won't have to work as hard in the next ten years to make sure people understand. But be mindful. 10 years, you have a different generation of folks who will be engaging in this process more so than some of us um, in terms of taking the leadership role. So it's people like you guys taking the leadership that will engage the generations to come and let them understand the importance of getting people out and getting people to be accountable. So we hope that in the next 10 years, it won't be as hard. And with technology, it might be even easier to reach out to the mass of people that we need to to become accountable. Uh, because once we get, you know, succeed in what our goal is, the money that we're going to get, we're going to put it into action so people can see, you know, how they help to improve mm -hmm. the human condition here and improve things in the city. So you can talk all you want to talk, as, but if people can see in actuality, what's happening with the funds and how they participated, they would be more likely to continue and do more the next time. And also, I agree with uh, Mayor Wilson and what Ms. Evans is saying as well. You as a young people, you're preparing yourself now. You've been educated. You could be our future leaders there. It's not a guarantee that Mayor Wilson or myself are going to be in this position. But by the, veins, by the uh, same token, the two of you are sitting there. There's a possibility you can be sitting as a commissioner, either a mayor in one of these cities here, and you'll be able to educate those people in the next 10 years because now you have gotten it, you have gotten knowledge of it, you know precisely what is to expect. So therefore, you'll be able to go out and let these individuals know that in the next 10 years, we're gonna make sure that we are prepared so we won't have to work as hard to trying to get the censors taken care of. Ms. Angela, do you have anything to say? I concur with what everybody else said. Um, I'm hoping that the conversation, even after uh, census is over, so that it's not so difficult all these types of hurdles if it's taxation. And let me just say, um, I don't think none of us agree with we want our goal is 80%. Our goal is no less than 80%. Thank you. All right, thank you guys so much for answering those questions. We just wanna give you guys the opportunity to have um, one minute of closing remarks of anything you wanna us as well as our participants and citizens who are on the call today. Okay, first of all, I would like to commend you young ladies for taking the lead with this. I think I met you all some years ago. My daughter was your teacher. So that's been a long time ago. My, this thing, my daughter taught you kids. So we want to thank you for getting involved and continue to be involved. And if there's any assistance that we can give you, please feel free to call because we are here just to help. And we, I thank you very much. And I just want to say that. Um, I would like to also commend the young people, and I think one of the young ladies you went to the conference with us um, um, in Tampa, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's always important to have our young people to step up um, and step in and get involved. And to all the ones who tune in on this um, broadcast, thank you guys for uh, being a part. Uh, we're going to do our part from the city of Belgrade, uh, as Angela indicated. We pray and hope that it won't be less than 80%, but we're going to step up to the plate. And again, thank you for your young leadership. And thank you all for being engaged. And I did what Ms. Uh, Mayor Wilson and uh, Ms. Evans has stated. You know, you're all wonderful. 
you young people that are stepping up to the plate and want to do things in the glaze area. As the individuals that come to us and talk about different things, they like to see changes in the glaze area. You are the leaders. You are the future leaders in the glaze area. I want to commend you for the wonderful work that you're doing and continue to do what you're doing. And always put God first in everything that you do. May God bless you. I would like to say congratulations. Met one or both of you at Glaze Central in your classroom because one of you invited me. So thank you. And ever since then, y'all have made a video, done put it out there. I didn't know nothing about it. Uh, and you're still moving forward. So congratulations, our leaders, our team leaders, our young leaders in our Glaze area. We are proud of you. Other teams will look at you and say, I want to do that too. I want to be involved too. So someone asks, what can be done? What can the teachers do? So the teachers have a lot of influence mm -hmm. uh, with the kids, their students, even parents. If everybody will begin talking about the importance of census right now, and if it's possible, not even letting them leave you, but saying, hey, the, the um, toll-free number for English, call right now. It's 844-330-2020. If you speak Spanish, the toll-free number is 844-468-2020. Call now. If your language is Creole, the toll-free number mm -hmm is 844-470-2020 or go to my2020.gov, fill out your information. It took me less than five minutes. The only questions we really need, where do you live? What language do you speak? How many other people live in your household? Have you been living there since April the 1st? It takes less than five minutes. It's simple, it's easy, but it is so important. Make sure you begin to talk about or continue to talk about it with your pastor so that we can knock these increases, we can knock this out, out of the park. We need to be, we should not be on the bottom with so much information. Because if everybody's talking about it, we're going to surpass our 80% for all our cities. So good luck to everybody. God bless you. Congrats to you as well, our teen leaders. Thank you so much. <laughs> we would like to personally today with us. We honestly just learned so much stuff from our guest panelists, and we're so thankful for the responses. Um, community, our community, our citizens, participants on here today. Um, we would like to also give a big shout out to all of you all here. Um, we hope that you all take this information that was given to us today, and you run with it, and you stand up, and you be. So would like to again thank our guest panelists for answering those questions so beautifully and just being, you know, so open to share certain things and to be vulnerable. Um, we do have some reminders that we would like to share with you. Before we get into reminders, we would also like to thank Philanthropy Tang again for helping us with this event. Um, they did such a tremendous job with just working with us and pretty much making sure that we had everything in place. Um, also, Economic Council, Mr. Ben, who is our coach, who really made sure that all of our guest panelists that we see here today was able to, to be on. Um, and also, Mr. Michael, for just being there and helping us to, you know, be able to even put the event together and funding our um, our creation, funding our vision so that it may come to life. Um, so we really just want to give you guys a big thank you for your efforts and support um, and taking the time out of your day to be here with us so that we may educate our communities. Um, for reminders, 
before reminders, we would also like to state that we have an event related to census and voter registration on September 26th with um, um, some partners from saying year five winner, Nisha and Johnny. That, that is in a word. We'll be releasing more information about that coming soon. But on to reminders, September 30th, 2020 is your final day to complete the census. Please inform, tell a friend, tell a friend, just let everyone know. October 5th, 2020 is your final day to register to vote. And November 3rd is election day. Please get out and vote. Stand up and be counted. Yes, and remember to keep our next event, put it on your calendars because that is the day where we will be making sure to work hard and finalizing, getting the last census completion and getting people registered to vote, as well as making sure to give back to our communities, giving them you know, care packages with the help of Anisha and Johnny, low hygiene, as well as some good because our Tri-City area loves to eat. So we're so excited about doing that and we hope that we see some of your amazing faces out there. Um, once again, thank you all so much. We hope that you all enjoyed this session and we cannot wait to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you all.